and the hospitality, including that basket. Oh my. Had some had some ultra bison last night with cranberry. Never had that before. Full protein. And then I had some uh, chocolate covered peanut M&Ms. It's good for the heart, the antioxidants. <laughs> and I, I chased that down with some vitamin C infused Lay's potato chips. <laughs> so I, I appreciate all the health and uh, it was wonderful. And I appreciate the opportunity to be with you all today and enjoyed a good time of fellowship last night. Thank you Sister Tammy and Pastor Brian for your uh, kindness and that good meal. How many of you know just having fellowship can be like a good meal? Yeah. Amen. And uh, so we appreciate you all being with us today. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to the book of Revelation, I'm so excited this morning because of that last word that was given about how they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And that's something we're talking about today. And so I just appreciate how the Holy Spirit will just drop in that confirmation right at the right time. Amen? Amen. But in the book of <coughs> Revelation, chapter 1, we see that God here is revealing Jesus Christ. And uh, how many know we're in a time and a season when we need a new revelation of Jesus Christ? Amen. That revelation is what blessed John. That revelation is what got John off of that island. And that revelation of Jesus Christ is what's going to deliver you and I from here to there. Amen. It's going to cause us to one day hear the sound of a trumpet. How many of you have ever heard the still small voice of the Lord speaking to your heart about something? Anybody ever feel like the Holy Spirit just prompted you about about something? Well, that's all the requirement that's necessary. If we can hear that still small voice, we'll hear that trumpet when it sounds. Amen? Amen. It'll come in on the same frequency, on the same channel. But here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy. How many want to be blessed? Amen. Amen. And keep those things that are which are written therein for the time is at hand. Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You that by Your stripes we were healed. Amen. We thank You that by Your stripes Pastor Brian was healed. Yes. In Jesus' name, we ask You to do a work in our hearts today. Help us prepare our hearts to receive the engrafted Word which is able to save our souls. And Lord, we thank You for it. Allow us to bring forth fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, even 100-fold in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we see the angel releasing or signifying this message, this revelation was signified. It was marked. It was uh, <coughs> given to John in the form of signs, in the form of types and shadows. The Lord was revealing Jesus Christ. He was revealing the hours and the days in which we're living now and the time that's soon to come. And he said in verse 1, he said, I'm showing you things, I'm showing things to his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. That word shortly there is a word that means rapidly, it means suddenly, 
And it's not referring to that it was going to be just a short time between when he showed the revelation and when it is fulfilled. What he actually is indicating there is that when these things begin to unfold, they're going to all happen very quickly. Amen? And that's, that's what he was talking about. And if we look over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to look at a few different verses and then come back to Revelation chapter 1. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, it says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. we got to read verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are, you are, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. So in other words, these things don't have to take us by surprise. Amen? Amen. We're children of the day. But he said that this is going to come upon them like travail uh, on a woman with child. And one more uh, instance, if we look over at Matthew chapter 24, verse 8, it will give us a sense of what he's referring to by when he said that these things will shortly come to pass. Matthew chapter 24. In verse 8, Jesus said, All these are the beginning of sorrows. He was talking about hearing about wars and rumors of wars and see that you be not troubled. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences. and You know what pestilences are like? COVID-19. Uh, pestilences that's taken the, the whole world, captivated the whole world's attention for a little over a year now. And earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I used to think that when Jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows that He was referring to that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. But actually that word sorrows there is the same word in the Greek that we just read earlier in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 for travails. And it's talking about what happens. Uh, how many of you here have ever had children? Well, they tell me, and I'm going from hearsay because I have not experienced this firsthand. Uh, sometimes I've looked like it, but I have not. Experienced. But they say that that when travail happens, when when the labor time begins to come, there are some contractions that will develop, and you know that the day is getting close when things start to happen. Amen. And. Uh, one of the things, uh, now I did a little research. I went to the Mayo Clinic because, I, like I say, I'm lacking in first-hand knowledge of this situation. So I wanted to know what happens when travail starts. What happens when there's a beginning of contractions? Because Jesus said, when you see these things beginning to happen, it's like the contractions have begun. The labor process has started and they're soon going to come to birthing. Amen. I mean, once that starts, that's it. It's going to happen. Now, what I read said that when you have your first child, sometimes things might take uh, hours or even days. But whatever takes days on your first child, on your following children, sometimes may only take hours. And what took maybe two to four hours the first time may only take one hour the next time. Am I telling? Yep. Is that right? Yep. And uh, so these things, depending on where you are in your, in your season, in your life, sometimes the first time can take a long time. Do you know that Jesus said, He said that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. 
And Noah, do you know it took them between 70 and 100 and some years to build that ark? And after they built that ark, he was on that ark and they were all shut in on that ark for a week before the rain ever started to fall. And don't you know that would have been a that would have been an interesting week. I mean, you're there, the animals are blowing and and uh, you know, doing their thing and messes are having to be cleaned up and and the aroma and then you know are we there yet are we there yet no nothing's changed uh, well we're why are we on this boat well the Lord's got us locked in now oh great well when is it gonna start I don't know but we're here and that was the first instance of a rebirthing of the earth the earth was renewed when the flood came there were minerals that were redeposited into the ground and and it was like the Lord was rejuvenating the earth. He was rejuvenating mankind. And Jesus said it's going to be like that, but I don't believe it's going to take that long this time. Amen? It's not going to take 120 years from the time. How many of you remember there was a time when Israel was reformed as a nation back in 1948? And Jesus said that's like the leaves that begin to bud on the trees. You know that summer is near. I mentioned to uh, the Williams children last night when I came in, it was, it was warm yesterday. And I asked them how their summer was going. And they said, it won't be summer for another month. But it felt like summer. And you know, you see the things beginning to happen and you know summer is getting near. The buds are starting to come on the trees. And, and uh, I saw an interesting picture the other day. Uh, now, a week and a half or two ago, we had snow. Did you all have snow? Yeah. We had like three inches of snow. And I saw a, uh, a picture, you know, grass was already growing. It was time to cut grass. So you had two people across the street from one another. One was blowing snow and the other guy was cutting his grass and got them both in one shot. I thought it was just great. But uh, you know you know that when one thing happens, another thing is coming quickly. And that's what it's like when birth pangs begin to come forth. And Jesus said that's what it's going to be like, that what's going on in the earth. And so when he said these things much shortly come to pass, that's what he's referring to. That when these signs begin to happen, know that it's all gonna it's all gonna come down quickly. How many of you know the birth pains have started? Jesus said these are the beginning of travail. These signs, these things that happen, they're reporting a lot more earthquakes than they used to before. Uh, part of that is due to we have a lot more equipment than they had 2,000 years ago. We can sense things a lot more than they could. So, and there's a lot more reporting. The Internet's a lot faster today than it was 2,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And so when something happens on one side of the world, we all hear about it, right? And uh, it, a lot of times it's what they want us to hear. But it, the, the ability to share information is just... And Jesus said we would hear about all these things more and more. And uh, that that would be the beginning. That would be the start of the process. Say this with me. There's no going back now. We've got to go through with it. And so we're, we're fast approaching that time. And then he talked about he bare record of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now let's go down to verse 8. We're going to look at uh, verse 8 and 9 here. Jesus is speaking. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation. You know, it's interesting. John could have said a lot of things. He could have said, I, John, the last living and most awesome apostle. He could have said, the only living person that walked with Jesus and, 
uh, the final uh, remaining disciple with the most apostolic authority, I, John. But he didn't say that, did he? He, he said, I, John, <laughs> excuse me, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Listen, I know what it is, John was saying, to endure things for Christ. At this point in his life, he'd already been thrown into a vat of oil as they tried to boil him alive. Uh, a vat of what was supposed to be hot oil, heated oil, and John miraculously walked away from that. And then he also had spent time, uh, we're going to see, uh, on, in a place called Patmos. Now look, notice what he says. He says, I was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You were referencing earlier today, if we go over to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. How many of you know the Lamb is the word? Uh, Jesus was the word made flesh. And he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. But he says, I was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And it, it takes both of those things. How many of you know the word of God was not popular in those days? Uh, they were trying to root it out. And so the word of God by itself would not have caused John any trouble. But it was the testimony of Jesus Christ. It was by what he said with his mouth that associated himself with the Word of God. His testimony, his Word. Have you ever endured anything because of your relationship with the Lord? Have you ever been mocked or scorned? Have you ever been persecuted in some way? Have you ever heard a voice that said, you're going through this difficulty because of your testimony and because of the Word of God. Do you know anybody that's ever been persecuted or had a harder time in life because of their relationship with God? Have you ever heard somebody say that? I'm suffering now because of Jesus. I, now this is because I, I'm a Christian and, I, and they're persecuting me. Have you ever heard that before? Well, John here is talking about uh, he said, I was there, but I want you to notice that three-letter word, was. I was. I was there. This is not something that we, I don't know of another place where anyone has ever written from this place. You either, you either is at Patmos or you no longer exist. Nobody was in Patmos. Uh, the word Patmos there means my killing. He was in the isle that is called my killing. John says, I was in the isle that is called my killing. In other words, this was supposed to be my undoing. I, this was not a place that I was supposed to recover from. Sometimes people say that John was on death row. No, he wasn't on death row. He was hooked up to the chair. I mean, they didn't send people there. Nobody comes back from Patmos. They turn them loose and that's the end of it. It was a barren island. There at one time had been trees there, but most of those had been cut down. People lived there at one time, but they left because they couldn't live there. There wasn't much fresh water. There was very little to sustain anyone. And anyone that tried to escape drowned because there were very uh, severe currents and it was a very rocky, dangerous shoreline. So if somebody tried to swim away, well, they didn't make it very far. The average time, the average length of period of time for political prisoners like John was that were just turned loose. Uh, you know, prison today, they, they say they, you know, you have three meals and a cot, and I wouldn't want that. Uh, uh, I've seen some of the meals in prison, and 
you know, turkey and gravy is like gravy with little bitty strings of meat in there. It's not, it's not real eating real good, but at least somebody is providing you something, right? Well, in John's case, the type of prisoner that John was, there wasn't anybody responsible for his meals or his life or happiness. They just turn you loose and you're on your own. And the average prisoner like that only lived about maybe two to four months. Can you imagine if they dropped you and I off somewhere on an island? I mean, uh, we would have a rough time if the power was out for two or three days. I mean, no McDonald's, no, no grocery store. Well, there, there was nothing there. And I, I, I don't know what he did. I don't know if he fished. I, I would assume maybe he did. What would you fish with? I mean, what would you, how would you, uh, how would you live? I, I don't know. You weren't supposed to live long. It was a place they put you up. Have you heard of the term cancel culture? <laughs> you know, John was suffering the ultimate in cancel culture. They didn't just kick him off of Twitter or give him a Facebook warning. They sent him to the Isle of My Killing and turned him loose and silence, tried to silence his voice. And sometimes people would be tempted to say, what I'm going through is because of my testimony. It's because of the Word of God. But notice that John didn't say that I am there. He said, I was there for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I want to propose today that the difficulties we feel we may face because of our relationship with the Lord, because of our testimony, is not causing us to suffer. It's causing us to overcome. Amen. It's causing us to come to a place of victory. It's causing us to be able to say one day, Pastor Brian, I was, I was in a chair. I was in this situation or that situation. Amen. But God, I was for my testimony in Jesus Christ and for the Word of God. For the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus, I was. Amen. But now, no longer I am. Amen? Amen? And that is the biggest, that is the biggest blessing that jumps out at me in verse 9 is that just simply that John says, I was in that eye. I was in the place of my killing. Just to be able to say, I was. We don't know anyone else that was able to say, I was there. We know a lot of people. There's bones scattered all over that island of people that were sent there. But we don't have any writings other than this here that says, I was there. I was. That was the place that was supposed to be where it all ended for me. No more tweets from John. No more Facebook posts from John. The internet was really slow back then. <laughs> especially on that island. I used to complain about having slow internet in Salem, Missouri. I don't do that anymore. You know, if it didn't hinder John, why should it hinder us? If it didn't hinder the early church, why should it hinder me? Amen? Amen? But John here is a place... Now, what happened to him? He lived, as believed, about 18 months on that island. And what happened is the person that put him there, the evil, wicked ruler, because John would not compromise... You've heard the story of the three, three Hebrew children and they were told to bow down and worship and they refused to do it so they were thrown in the fire. Well, John refused to worship the emperor at that time. He demanded not only that people worship him after he was dead like most of them, he wanted to be worshipped while he was still alive. And so they brought John in, they arrested him, they took him to Rome and they brought him in before the court and said, look, if you'll just do this, we'll forget all this. and You can go on your merry way. He wouldn't do it. He would not worship the emperor. And so therefore, uh, he wouldn't stop preaching. He wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. And so they canceled him and they just sent him off to that island. They thought, well, we'll fix you. Nobody will hear you. Well, history tells us that John began to preach to anyone else that he could find on that island. And people got saved. 
people came to Christ later on the Isle of Patmos. Other prisoners that were there just walking around dazed. And uh, so what happened was the emperor that sent John to Patmos, he was killed by his own people. And the next guy that came in, the Lord put it on his heart, laid it on his heart to release political prisoners like John that it's been sent to Patmos. That just didn't happen. That was not something... People didn't come back from Patmos, but John did. Amen? And so, notice that in order for him to say, I was in the isle that is called Patmos, that means he was somewhere else when he wrote this. And 18 months later, he was back in Ephesus. And uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, it was a revelation of Jesus Christ that got him off of this, got him off of this island. He said, "I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, um, saying, "I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia." Now think about this. The Lord appears to him, and they found the cave where John lived. He ended up in a, in a cave up in the southern part of this island. This island had about a 30-mile circumference, about 10 miles in one direction and, and uh, 6 or 7 in, in the other. But all the way around it was about 30 miles. And uh, as, as the Lord would have it, he, he ended up finding a small cave on the top of a, or about two-thirds of the way up a hill. And from this cave, he was protected from the weather. He was protected from the bright sun and the day. And, and he had an amazing vista. Uh, and there's a, a small chapel at this location now. There are people that lived on the island at that time. And they, uh, you know, there are records of of John being there and of him sharing the gospel with people at the time. And, and so there's still a chapel there to this day. And uh, But can you imagine John is there? Now, we've already talked about there was no internet. There was no postal service. There was no uh, nobody coming to check on him. He, there was no taxi service. He couldn't leave. And yet God tells him, I'm going to show you something and I want you to write it down and send it. What's he going to write it on? What's he going to write it yeah. with? How many of you know when God gives you and I an assignment, that's our ticket through whatever situation we're in right now. Because God's going to make a way for you and I to fulfill the calling and the destiny He's got in our lives. And if that means He has to uh, throw down one ruler and raise up another one and tell him to send a ship on our behalf to send us back to where we came from. And you know, when John got back there, he still had his house. His house was still there in Ephesus. And so, uh, the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, some may say that's what put John on the island, but what John says is that's what got me off the island. Amen. That's what got me through this situation was the Word of God and my testimony. I was, but because of the Word and my testimony, that's in my past. Now I'm in my future and I'm sending this Word that God gave me to send. I'm sharing the revelation of Jesus that God gave me. And it's that revelation of Jesus. It's the Word of God that comes alive in your heart and my heart that's going to get us to the place of destiny that God has for us. Amen. And you know, ultimately, that place of destiny is ruling and reigning with Him forever and ever and ever. Amen? And so, our testimony and His Word. Our testimony associate, associates us with His Word. It associates us with the Gospel. It's what we say out of our own mouth. You know that what we say will make a difference in, in where we end up in life? How we speak, what we speak. 
it makes a difference when we speak and confess and profess the promises of the Word of God over our lives. Amen? It literally changes our destination. And that's what allowed John to say, because of the Word of God and my testimony of the Word of God, I was glory to God. Amen. I was at the place of my killing. I was at the place that was supposed to be at the end of me, but I'm not now, and I'm here writing to tell you about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so there's great power in that. And Jesus said that these things are going to happen uh, quickly. They're going to be like a travail. When travail comes upon a, a woman that's expecting. You know, you can go through nine months, eight months, nine months, you know, and it's just, uh, I'm not going to say it's nothing, but it, there's not a lot of activity there going on other than maybe you've got the, the shower to go to and you can feel the little feeties kicking and, and you know, there's picking out the clothes that you got to have and all that kind of thing. But once those contractions start, now it's hammer time. It's getting serious, right? <laughs> I mean, we've got to we've got to stay kind of close to wherever you got to be for that, right? right? Amen. You don't want to be on in the cab on the side of the road somewhere. I mean, it can happen. It can be done, but you'd rather be somewhere. You know, it kind of gives you little signals so you can get yourself ready, so you can be prepared. Amen. And uh, uh, that's what the Lord has given us. He said, when these things start, it's like when those contractions begin to happen. It's not going to be long. And you and I are living in a time, we're living in a season when that has already started. Jesus said these things are going to be uh, like when the travail comes upon someone. He said it's going to be suddenly. There's going to be a... It, when that starts, it's going to be just a short period of time. And He said this generation that sees the beginning of these things are going to see the whole thing through. How many believe we're in that generation? Amen. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you. There will be times, there may be situations where difficulty comes to our lives because of our testimony, because of the Word of God. Uh, the world is still at war with the Word of God. And so they're going to have a, an issue with anybody that associates themselves with that Word. But you know what? That's an incomplete way to look at it. Not only does difficulty sometimes come because of the Word of God and because of our testimony, but that's also how we get through it, how we triumph over it, because the Lord causes us always to triumph in the Lord Jesus. That's how we get through it. That's how one day we're going to meet Him in the air. That's how one day we're going to forever be with Him. Amen? Amen. And even the, even the saints, in the book of Revelation, later on it talks about how there were saints that lost their, they were literally beheaded for the gospel. Even those, uh, I don't want to open a, too big of a can of worms here, but sometimes people say, well, how are, who are those saints? Well, my, my belief is that, you know, there's a lot of people that can quote the Scripture as good or better than you or me, but they're just not paying a lot of attention to it. And one of these days, people are going to realize, oh, wait a minute, all that stuff we heard when we were growing up, I think it just happened. And now, I, I've got to get serious. I know what's coming next. Man, I, I, I didn't have time to serve the Lord then, but I... I I want to make it. I'm going to serve Him now. Only it's going to be entirely different. There's going to be a lot of persecution. There's going to be uh, worse and more difficult times than this world has ever seen. And some people will lose their life because of their testimony. That's what it's talking about in Revelation chapter 12. People that have lost their lives because of their testimony. But He said they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they may lose their life during the tribulation period, but guess what? They rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. And so that's how you and I should begin to look at our 
relationship with God, our testimony, the Word of God, is not just uh, something that sometimes we endure something for, but it's what causes us to triumph. He causes us always to triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen? And uh, greater is He that's in us than he that is in the world. Can you say this with me? I was. I was. I was. Due to my testimony, due to the Word of God, I was. And now I'm victorious. Amen? Do you receive that today? Amen. Well, I wonder if it'd be all right. We'll just have a time of. Uh, uh, if anybody would like special prayer, we'll be glad to do that with you. Uh, if you're going through something and just uh, you just need to get through to the place where you was. You'd like to, anybody anybody ever go through something and you were looking forward to when it was in the past and you could talk about how you. How you overcame. Amen. Well, that's what John was doing. He said, look, I was. That was supposed to be the end of me. That was the isle of my killing. And here I am. Amen. So I just want to agree with you. Is anybody just with an upraised hand, you'd say, I, I need some I was activating in my life. Glory to God. Lord, you see our hands today. You said that you're greater than anything that we can face in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. By Your blood, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we were. Lord, I was. I was. That was supposed to be the isle of my killing. But I was. I was. Hallelujah. Lord, we was. Thank You, Jesus. Lord, we pray You'll help us to remember that John was a walking miracle because of that Word of God. Because of his testimony, he was. And because of our testimony, we were. Amen. Lord, we thank You for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank You. Thank You very much, Pastor Billy. That is an awesome, awesome word. Thank You, Lord. Amen. I feel like I just need to chew it on a little longer, you know? <laughs> that is a good word. We, we're overcomers. Thank you, Lord. Just, just kind of chewing on this good word. One of those repeaters. Overcomers through Christ Jesus. Yeah, so whatever we're going through. Allow the testimony of Jesus Christ to get us there to overcome. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Billy. Awesome word today. Thank you, Lord. Great word for the body. So, Amen. We'll just take that with you guys. Carry it with you. And, and as you're walking the days ahead, remember that you are an overcomer. Whatever's to come to face us in the future, we're, we're overcomers through Christ Jesus. Amen. And I like that. I was. That's, that's a good word, brother. Right? I was. Amen. Well, let's wrap that up. And uh, God is so good. Just let's face our week a little different this week with overcoming, with the joy of the Lord and all that we do this week. Amen? Well, we'll see you guys on Tuesday Night Prayer at 7 o'clock. And if we don't see you then, we'll see you next Sunday uh, for Sunday morning service. So, uh, bless Pastor Billy this morning, and you guys have a blessed, blessed day. Thank you.